Okay, any guesses as to what this is? Theta equals what? Pi over 2 plus pi times n. What did you get, Victor? No, the same thing. Did you get pi times n? Yeah. Are you sure you didn't get 2 pi times n? Yes. Okay, because this is correct. Now, what's, this is what I want to talk about. So, very often what I've done in class, now, this is easy to see when, let's say, instead of equals zero, we're talking about equals one half. Then you could see, aha, we have two places that are where that's going to be the case. And the distance between them is, is going to be some, something weird, right? So you can't just say, oh, it's... And what, is it, what does it turn out to be? Let's see, 1 half, 1, 2, it's pi over 3, root 3, here's pi over 3, and so cosine of that would be pi over 3. And then we find that the other one is in the fourth quadrant, yeah, quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4, so it would be... Wait, no, the other yeah. one's in the second quadrant. Wait, no. This is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3. Oh, this is oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, just, that's good, that's good. So, um, let's see, pi over 3 down here would be, well, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Or 6 pi over 3 minus 1 is 5 pi over 3. Okay, so you have 5, five pi over 3, right? And so then I say, if you want all infinitely many solutions, the thing you do is you choose one of them and go pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And then here you go 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n, because cosine's periodic, and so every 2 pi you go, you end up getting the next one. Now, here's, here's the thing. There's one value, output value on here, where those things are exactly pi apart. And that's going to be the output value of 0. You'll notice, like this is pi over 2, this guy here is... 3 pi over 2, and that distance from there to there is pi apart. And so if you wanted to get all of those, you could just say, instead of doing what we did here, where you say, okay, one of them's pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, the other one's 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. In this case, because it happens to be off by the same amount, you could just pick one of them, but then it's not 2 pi n, right? It would be every pi n. If we were doing the same thing with sine theta, right, if it were find all the values of sine theta equals zero, well sine would start here at zero and then it goes to pi, then two pi, three pi, and you'd say well theta is just equal to n times pi, and it happens to be because that's the only place where, you, where it's going to be spaced by that amount, right, this is spaced by pi. If it were something else, again if it were like one half, then the two values aren't spaced by pi. And so you can't just say, well, if I get that one and add pi, I'll get that one, and then I'll get that one. Obviously, that doesn't work. And so for whichever one this is, which turns out to be pi over 6, and then 5 pi over 6, you'd have to do this individually with each one because they're not spaced off by pi, right? And so I just wanted to say that. And I was picking on you because in your homework, you did this, but with a 2 pi n. And which is, of course, and I, that's why I'm doing this, because I didn't, you know, I know that you know this. It's just that I want to make sure that, because it's easy in your brain to just go, all oh, right, yeah, pi over 2, and then we'll just do this. But then you do the 2 pi n trick, right? So yeah. it's easy to switch those up. That's why I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about it. So do I have everybody's quizzes? Is I haven't I haven't taken a minute. Okay, all right. Give me just a second. All right, we're gonna try some rubbing alcohol today and see what happens. Wish me luck. Oh, nice, beautiful. Although now this is gonna freeze to there, and we might be in a world of hurt. But let's see. Okay, everybody got the homework written down? Oh yes. And that's what, yeah, the, the, the homework that I put on the board, everybody has that written down, in case this happens to mess it up. Okay.
quiz. Oh, and the card. Yes, thank you. Oh, we're supposed to. I asked you to turn in the card. Ugh. Okay, Sorry. you have until. I trust that you. Did you make a card? I did. Okay, I trust you. Just get it to me. Yeah. So when you're taking, anytime you're taking a class and the professor or teacher asks you or get, lets you know that there's a note card, usually you're going to turn that in with your stuff. And that's often to your benefit, because then the teacher can see, oh, that's why you thought this, because you copied this down wrong, and they might give you some grace or whatever. Maybe not. Um, where's my purple? I don't have a purple. It's black. Okay, so, here we go. <laughs> Moving into chapter eight. Now, let's recall our convention. So, we are moving out of right triangles. We are going to deal with oblique mm. triangles. Oblique triangles are triangles that are not right triangles. So it could be an acute triangle or an obtuse triangle. Do you guys know the difference between an obtuse and an yeah. acute? Acute is all angles are acute, so it can't be right because right is not acute. Um, obtuse has one acute angle. You can't have more than, I mean, sorry, one, an obtuse has one obtuse angle. And in flat geometry, you can't have more than one obtuse angle. So that's it. But oblique triangles. So check this out. Let's remember our convention. This kind of looks equilateral. I don't mean for it to be. This could be any, in this case, acute triangle. What I'm about to derive, your book does it with an obtuse triangle. And I, and I could just reproduce what the book did. I'm going to do an acute case. Can't you just split it in half and it's two, two right triangles? Yes, you could. You could you could split it right down any of these and you get two right triangles. That's true. But check this out. So first thing to note, right, to, or first thing to remember is our convention. If this is alpha, what do we call this side? Uh, um, sine. Oh. No, no, no. We have a name for the, the length of the side. Oh. A. A. A, yeah. If this is beta, uh, if that's beta, we call that B. B. And if this is gamma, C. we call this C. That's not a Y, that is a gamma. Okay, and that's what your book is going to do in this. And we're going to refer to this as this is triangle ABC. It's understood that opposite from alpha is A, opposite from beta is B, opposite from gamma is C. We're going to use that convention forever now. Now, check this out. Watch what happens. I'm going to, I'm going to drop some coordinates here. I'm going to put this here on the origin and do this like that. And we're going to extend the x-axis this way. Okay? Now, check this out. <clears throat> this has some height right here. Let's call that height h, whatever that height is, h. And you can imagine that I drew this right here. I just don't want to mess up my triangle because it'll look really ugly. So there's h right there. Now, then, we should be able to compute what is sine of alpha. Uh, h over c. h over what? C. Yeah. Yeah, because h is just the opposite side. And it doesn't matter how big or how small this triangle is, right? This is, just by definition, what sine alpha is. Now what we could do, and, and I'm, there's a few different ways I could do this, but I'm going to choose to take this triangle and flip him over this way. Your book does this a little, actually, I think this is the way your book does it, but I'm, I'm going to do the same kind of setup here. I'm going to leave my coordinates in place. Flip this guy around so that now gamma is that's so that gamma is there. I flip this over so alpha is here. Beta is still up here. And so opposite from gamma is what? Uh, C. C. Opposite from alpha is A. And opposite from beta is B. Okay, so check this out now. I just took this triangle, flipped him over, and that's what we got. And I'm just seeing, yes, the C came over here. The A went over there. The B stayed in place but got reversed. Those guys flipped. That's all I did. It, is the height the same? Yeah. 
it's still the same h, whatever that h happened to be. It could be 10, it could be the square root of 3 over 5, right? Whatever h is, it hasn't changed. So now I'm going to ask, what is sine... Uh, do, 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 do. do this here. What is sine gamma? H over a. H over a. Now watch this. If I multiply both sides of this guy by C, I get C sine alpha equals H. If I multiply both sides of this, I get A sine gamma equals H. Is H equal to H? Yeah. So then this is equal to that, isn't it? Yeah. It has to be. It has to be that C sine alpha is equal to A sine yeah. Now this is this is what we're going to remember here. Divide by a, divide by c, and I end up with sine alpha over a is equal to sine gamma over c. Real easy to remember because it's sine of the angle over whatever the opposite thing is is equal to sine of this angle over whatever the opposite thing is. But more is true. Watch what I could do. If I, let's say, I took my original triangle, and I didn't mean to draw this equilateral. I mean, this, this could have been any way here. But I'm going to take my original triangle and just rotate it. In fact, so I make sure I don't mess this up. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do it right here, and then I'll redraw it on the axes. But I'm gonna take B and rotate it so that I'm sorry, angle beta is now in this position. So beta has been rotated here. And so if I've rotated this that way, so counterclockwise, then what is that guy? Yeah. Gamma, right? Gamma comes up to the top. And then I guess alpha would come back over here, and there would be alpha. And I'm, I'm going to check myself here. I don't want to just put a B, an A, and a C here. Let's just make sure. If I took my A and rotated it over, it would end up here. If I took my B and rotated it over, it would end up here. If I took my C and rotated it down, yes, it would end up here. Okay, so we're good to go. Now, check this out. So same triangle. Everybody agree? This is the same triangle I started off with. Yeah. I mean, I haven't drawn it perfectly. I know that. But... The height might be different. Say what? Yeah. The height may very well be different. That's why I'm erasing everything. Uh, for what we're about to do. Because, again, like, we're not talking about an equilateral triangle here. I mean, it will... What we're about to do will work for an equilateral triangle. But it doesn't need to be. And if I could draw better, I would have drawn the three different sides, obviously different, but whatever. And note, your, your book does the same thing, but with an obtuse triangle, and it comes to the exact same conclusion. So in other words, this will work for any oblique triangle. Any triangle, what we're about to derive, will work for any triangle, ABC, that is not a right triangle. Obtuse, it could be acute, as long as it's oblique, as long as it's not a right triangle. So we're going to do the same thing here. Now I'm going to put B, or I'm sorry, beta, in this, it's what's, this is called the standard position. I'm going to put beta in standard position, putting B here. Gamma here is C here. Alpha here means A here. And now, whatever this height is, it may not be H, let's give it a new name, how about K? Okay. Now, what is sine beta? Sine beta is equal to whatever what? K, K over A. K over A. Now, I'm going to do the same trick where I flip this guy around. We end up with an alpha down here. Beta flips over here. Gamma stays up at the top, meaning C is still down here. Now A is on this side, B is on the other side, and the height is now what? Still, 
Still K, still K. So now what is sine alpha? K over B is equal to K over B. And same trick, I'm gonna bring this guy up and go A sine beta is equal to K, B sine alpha is equal to K. Therefore, these two things are equal. A sine beta is equal to B sine alpha. So that now I'm going to divide through and I get that sine beta over B is equal to sine alpha over, oops, A. They're all equal. And so they're all equal, right? Because if, if that's sine alpha and that, I mean, sine alpha over A is equal to sine beta over B, we get all that right there. And we get everybody now, sine beta over B. And so this is, this right here is called the law of sines. Law of sines. And you can memorize this if you want. It's real easy to remember, or, and your book even says this, you could just think about what it means is that the, the, the proportion of the sine of an angle with its, or the ratio, the ratio of the sine of an angle with its opposite side, so for instance, sine beta divided by b, is equal to sine of any other angle over its opposite side. Okay, that's why it's important that we have this convention, because now when you see that, you know that alpha matches with a, and it's the opposite one. Gamma matches with c, it's the opposite one. Beta matches with b, and it's the opposite one. Okay. The only thing here, the only caveat, is that triangle ABC must be oblique. So this wouldn't work at all for a right triangle? Well, I don't think so. I don't think it does. I think we could probably come up with a quick counterexample of it not working. Um, yeah, 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 because let's look. Let's just check. Let's, let's use a one that we know. 1, 2, square root 3. Here's pi over 6. And this one's pi over 2. Okay. So then sine pi over 2 over 2. Is that equal to sine pi over 6? Over the opposite would be 1. Sine pi over 6 is 1 half. It oh, happens yeah. to work in that case. Mm. I'm sure we could find one that doesn't work. Otherwise, it wouldn't matter. Although, well, if we... Maybe! I don't want to say. I don't want to say. Because I know what we're about to do in the next section. The stuff we're about to do won't work. But that would be interesting. Like, we would have to do the, repeat the same proof that we did only using a right triangle to start off with. Um, what about this one? Does that work? Pi over three is sine pi over three over root three. The same thing as that. Sine pi over three is root three over two. Root three over two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, does, it, does, it actually does work. Okay, but I, I don't want to step down. There's, there's got. I think that there's some, some instance where it doesn't work, and we just happen to be using these. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to say yes or no on that. So maybe, maybe, maybe it works. But this is this is the law of science. And so I think it does work. Ah, I want to. I'm not gonna say. It. Not gonna say. It. Are we gonna do the law of cosines? The next is law of cosines. But this is this is the utility of the law of sines. We will talk, we will, we will go into this. Let's see what we're gonna use this for. Um yeah, I'm gonna erase everything. Alright, so let's do this.
So that was the law of signs. We're going to be using it all day. <laughs> okay. We're about to. <laughs> this is... Oh man. Okay, so you remember earlier this year we did. We'd give you some, and it was always a right triangle when we did this. We had some kind of right triangle, and then you'd have an alpha and an A and let's say uh, one other thing. So they give you an alpha, they give you an A, and maybe they give you this right here. And then they say, solve the triangle. And so you have to find uh, beta, you know it's a right triangle, and so then you have to find C, right? This is what we're gonna be, this is what your homework is pretty much all about. There's tons of application questions giving you like, you know, a plane is flying, blah, 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 how far is it from here to here? And it all comes down to finding, you know, to solving these triangles. And so, depending on what you're given, whether they give you two angles and a side, or a side and an angle and another side, then there's different ways to go about doing it. So let's talk about first just the tri types of triangles. And we're going to abbreviate, same way that your book does. There's angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. This is one class of types of, types of triangles that, that you could have. And this is where, in other words, you're given two angles in any side. So for instance, well, if you have two angles, you can get the third. There you go. And this is in both. This is what makes this case so easy. Is given any two angles on a triangle, you could get the third really easily, right? And so technically, if you have angle side angle or angle angle side, you have angle 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 side, right? So that's not that hard to deal with. Um, so here's some for instances. Like an angle, angle side would be like they give you an alpha and a, let's say, gamma and an A. And so you have an alpha, you have a gamma, and then A. Okay, so what we don't know here, let's see how I'm doing this, is like we don't know this angle. We don't know this side. We don't know this side. Okay? Or maybe they give you alpha and B, so you know those two, but you don't know beta. You don't know gamma. You don't know this side. These are just question marks here. So there's three knowns, three unknowns here. We also don't know this. Notice one thing I've done here. I've done this deliberately. In this case, I did gamma. In this case, I did beta. For the rest of the day, it's really not going to matter how I draw these. The only thing that's, the way that I draw these is going to be, I, I almost always do it the same way. If you get, if I'm given a, obviously, an opposite side, right, like alpha and A are both given, I'm going to set it up like this, where alpha goes here in the standard position, and then the one that's opposite to it will be opposite from it. If I'm given an, an angle, or let's say two angles, and then a side that's not opposite. Well, I guess this one's opposite. I just, I don't know why I did that. I probably would have done it where the beta's here and the B's opposite from it. Whatever, okay? That's not really the point here. You'll see as I go along to do this. Now, angle side angle is a little bit different. Angle side angle. The reason why, you're like, well, it's two angles on one side. Yeah, but in this case, we're calling it something special because the side is between the two given angles. So let's say they give me an A. I'm given an alpha, and I'm given a beta, and then they give me C right there. That's another type, like that. And now in this case, we don't know this, we don't know this, and we don't know that. That would be angle side angle. And just like Noah said, these are easy because in every case you have 
two angles gives you the third angle, right? In fact, that's where you're going to start. <laughs> you're gonna, I mean, that's going to, because all of these are going to be solve the triangle. In other words, find all of the missing unknowns. Find that one, that one, and that one. In this case, find that one, that one, and that one. Well, real easy, you could just say, well, I know that the sum of these angles is 180, so then 180 minus that, minus that. And yes, we will be doing degrees for most of this stuff. That's why we're doing calculators. So then you could find that, real easy to go. Now, the one that's really hard is angle side side. And it is a pain in the angle side side. This one is this one is a this one is a pain in the angle side side. This is where you're given two sides and one angle and one of the angles is opposite to one, oh, I'm sorry, and the angle, sorry, it's only one angle. And the angle, the angle is opposite to one of the sides. And in that case, I'm always going to draw it where the angle given and the opposite is here. This is just how I like to do it, and you're going to see me consistently. So they give you an alpha and an A, and then they give you some other side. Let's say that other side is C. So they give you C. And the thing is, I'm always going to set it up like this too, where the other given one, whether it's called B or whether it's called C, I don't care what it's called. I'm going to put it right there. You'll see why. But then your unknowns are here. We don't know what that is. We don't know what that is. And we don't know what that is. This one is a pain in the angle side side. Well, you can find, oh wait, oh, you can't find the other side. Are we gonna oh. do that? Yeah, and you'll see it's a pain in the angle side side. So, okay, so before we go into this one, which is where we're gonna spend the rest of the day, let's do a quick one right here, just so we can see how easy that is. Uh, yeah, so, for instance, and you'll notice, actually, uh, you may, we may not do that. My, I, I really wanna drive this point home you might think like, oh, we're going to set it up like this. But, so in other words, this is where they gave you angle alpha equals, I don't know, 20 degrees. And then they said uh, they give you an A equals, say, 10. And then they give you a C equals 5. And you might think, well, if it had been B that was given, then I should have drawn it like, oops, then I should have drawn it where... Alpha is here, and since B is what was given, that's what I'm going to put here because B has to match with this, and so then these are my unknowns and stuff like that, and I'm going to say, oh, and there's A would have been given, right? No, that doesn't matter. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say, well, hold up, just just for consistency, because you'll see what how we're when we deal with this, why I want to do it this way. If I were given this setup, I would still draw it so that alpha is down there, the side opposite is over here, and then the unknown here is B, making this beta, making this gamma. It will be important to set it up like this so that the other given side, so your opposite ones are always right here, and then the other given one is going to be right there regardless of if it's alpha and A and then B or C, or beta and B and either A or whatever, it's always gonna look like this setup right there. Everybody got that? Okay, so let's do a quick, do I do an angle side angle, which one is this? Okay, so here we go. <laughs> oh. uh, well, the good thing I brought a lot of these. A lot of this.
Oh, did everybody get this? <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. If I ever start erasing something and you and, and like you really need me to not erase, just yell like, no, not yet, and I'll wait. Mm. Okay. So here we go. So just like in your homework, this is actually from that section. This is solve triangle ABC, what it says. This is number six. And yep, of course that happened. Of course, that's really bad. Nine, nine, I wonder how many minutes I've wasted yesterday, Tuesday and today, and will waste today. So, okay, we're solving ABC. This is number six, and you're given alpha is equal to 103.45 degrees. Notice they give you two decimal places here for degrees. Your final answer should have two decimal places for the degrees. Gamma is equal to 27.19 degrees. B is equal to 38.84. Not degrees, that's an actual measure of length. So now here's the thing, two angles, this is super easy, right? We could find the third angle. Let's just go ahead and do that. Gamma, is going to equal 180 minus alpha minus, not gamma, beta, sorry, right? Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, gamma. So minus that. And let's see, I want to actually do this in real time. Where did I put my calculator? Seriously? Okay, we'll do this in real time. If you guys want to follow along, I'm going to go 180 minus 103.45 minus 27.19 gives me. Anybody got it? 49.36. 49.36. Now notice I'm keeping that 36, that 6 there. I'm not rounding up. Why? Because, well, Two decimal places here, two decimal places here. I need to have two there. Now what I'm going to do is actually draw a triangle. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but the closer to accurate you are, the easier your life's going to be. So I notice that I have an obtuse angle. I'm going to go ahead and start like this. There's, there's a nice obtuse angle. Okay. And so I'm going to call that one. And it would be nice if you guys actually labeled it the way I'm about to right here, where you put the name and the actual measure in it, 103.45 degrees, like that. Now, let's think about this. B is given, so I could do this either way, really. Um, I'm going to finish this triangle up like this. And I notice, okay, this looks like the smaller of the angles. Maybe. I mean, maybe it's just the way I drew it. That, again, not that big of a deal. But I do want to try to make this thing look good. So I'm going to make the smaller angle this one. So that's gamma equals 27.19 degrees. And then we'll make this guy beta. Beta equals 49.36. Degrees. And so B was given, so that guy's got to go over here. So I'm going to label him B equals 38.84. It would be really cool if you guys did this, right? Like give not just the, the actual measures when you draw these guys out, but to do this. This will help you. So my unknowns then at this point are A, opposite from alpha, and C, opposite gamma. So we're just going to use the law of signs. Right? So, and look at the one, I only, I, I have one. I have B is given, right? This guy is, is the given one. 
So I'm going to start there. I'm going to say sine beta. And instead of writing beta, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Sine 49.36 over. 38.84 is equal to, and now I can get either of the ones, the other ones I want. Okay, so how about this one? Let's do this one. Sine alpha, alpha is 103.45 over A. A is the thing I want. Now, let's just stop for a second. One thing to notice is that if sine alpha over a is equal to sine beta over b, say, or I could have done that with gamma and c. I could have done any pairwise of the two, of the three. Um, it's also true, if I multiply both sides across, right, my b comes upstairs, and my a comes upstairs, like that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of how we got it. That's where we started off. And so then what I could do from there is bring the other guys down. I could say that B over sine beta is equal to A over sine alpha, right? So knowing that I'm looking for this, this side, right? Like that's my, I have all my angles. I could have started this off by saying, well, hold up. I know I, I want A in the denominator. So I could have written this the other way around to start off with. In fact, I'll do that later, but right now I'm just starting it off this way. So anyway, I want the A by itself. So I'm going to bring him upstairs, up over here. Then, well, this guy's going to stay put. How about sine 103.45 stays put? This guy's going to come downstairs. And then this guy's going to come upstairs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody got that? Everybody saw what I did? Right? I took this equation here. I brought A upstairs, so he lives up there. I brought this one downstairs, so he lives down here. I brought this one upstairs, so he lives right there. These are the same equations. Just really just... Because then... And wouldn't it be sign of... 103.45 over sine of 49 over 38, and then you simplify that by flipping and multiplying. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, A, B, C, D. D was the thing I was looking for. So I brought D upstairs. Right. Yeah. And then I brought the A downstairs and the B upstairs, oh, okay. giving me this, C times B over A. That's all I did right here. I moved this guy upstairs, so he came up here. That guy stayed put. That guy comes upstairs. This guy comes downstairs. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay, cool. And like, and again, Knowing that I was solving for A, knowing that A was my goal in all of this, I could have set this up by saying A is to sine 103 stuff as B 38.84 is to sine 49. Yeah, and then my A is equal to 38.84 times sine 103 over sine 49.3, right? So you, the, the more of these you do, the quicker you'll just jump to this probably. In fact, you probably won't even bother writing this down because after you do like five of these, you'll just get in the habit of rearranging these things and you'll know which one goes where. Just make sure you do it right. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna type this all in in one fell swoop, okay? Yeah. okay? So I'm gonna go sine 103. 103.45, end parentheses, times 38.84, 38.84, divide by sine 49.36, end parentheses, and I get, what do I get? 49.78. That's what I got. Seven. 
I might have. 49.603. Oh, that's what I get. See, sine. Let me try and get it right. 38. Point eight four sine forty nine point ah I'm wrong forty nine point three six forty nine point seven eight one 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 blah 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 good okay excellent so forty nine point seven eight and I'm gonna keep more digits than I think I need I urge that you do the same thing okay. Now there's only one more unknown down there, and it's C. Knowing that I'm gonna want C by itself, I'm not gonna set it up like this. I'm gonna start with C. I'm gonna say C is to sine, sine of what? 27 point. There you go, right? It's yeah. the opposite, the opposite one. 27 point, what was it? 19. 27.19. <laughs> Make sure you're in degree mode on your yeah. calculator. As now here's the thing. If I wanted to, I could use the one that I just did. But this is the problem, is that this is a yeah, this is a the the more calculations you get away from what you've been given, the harder it's gonna like the, the more um uh, chances for error you're gonna have okay since we know that this one's exact right it beta wasn't given but we know that since this is measured and this is measured then this is exact with respect to these this was a given number so it's always good to try to use your given numbers with your stuff so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna say as B is the sine beta, but B is 38.84, sine beta is 49.36. And so getting that guy upstairs, we have 38.84 times sine 27.19 all over sine 49.36. And so let's see what that is. 38.84 times sine 27.19 in parentheses divide by four nines oh, sine of four nine point three six in parentheses anybody get it 23.388 that's what I got this is 23 point 3886. And so on a quiz, this is what I'll be looking for. That you can do this right here. Okay. I suggest that you keep more decimal places than you think you need. Because if you ever then go on to answer more questions off of this stuff, Rounding error is a huge thing. And if you've rounded this off, right, maybe you rounded that up to four, and then you go do three more calculations with this value, you're going to hate your life. And it's better to just, if you're going to actually use this, use your calculator. If your calculator, like, does that, you could just go up and go, up. Oh, that's the one, and then you use it. That's what I'm going to be doing here in a minute. Or you so, could just use the exact values. You could use, you could use the exact values too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay, questions on that before we move to the pain in the angle side side? Okay, I will show you why this is such a pain in the angle side side. So this one's really straightforward. If you're given two angles, it's almost too easy. Like, two angles gives you the third angle, then you just use law of signs until it's all over. And, uh, oh, And so, I, yeah, we don't really need to go into that anymore. This should be very straightforward. Just make sure that if you're rounding stuff off, um, you don't do it too early, right? Wait until the very, very, very end to round something. 
anytime you could uh for, yeah for beta you at the beginning you wanted us to round so we have the same amount of significant digits well I didn't know we didn't round though you didn't no because with the two oh just okay. because yeah. yeah we didn't if you multiplied or divided to get the angle which you won't Right, because you're subtracting for 180, and if everybody has two decimal places, then it will be exactly two decimal places. So, good question, good question. So yeah, we didn't round, as far as we're concerned, that was an exact value. Although, in reality, like, if you have 25.38 degrees, that 0.38 carries its own uncertainty along with it. Like, who measured that? And you know, like, was he estimating the point, the eight, the point three eight, whatever. And so, usually don't use the word exact whenever you're using decimal places, because it's usually not. But in the case of what the context of what we're doing here, I'm calling it exact. Okay, anyway, okay. So here we go. Angle, side, side. Assume that an alpha is given and that it's acute. Okay? So assume, and we could have started with beta. We could have started with gamma. I'm just going to say, assume that alpha is given and it's acute. It means it's less than 90, right? And length A is given. as one of the sides. Now assume we're given another side, and let's just call it B. It could have been C, right? Like, like I said earlier, just be, like, don't get in your head like, oh, this is what you do if A and B are given, but if A and C are given, then what? No, 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 just, you're given another side, let's just call it B. Call the other given side Okay, so we're naming it B. Then there are four possibilities. <laughs> this is such a pain right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take alpha and put it in standard position. Okay. Wait, so there's four different triangles that could... There's four possibilities. Watch. Just, you'll see. You'll see. There's four possibilities. Here's the first possibility. Alpha is given. And I'm choosing to, that the other given side I'm going to put right here. Here's one possibility. A is too short. <laughs> In which case, there's no triangle. Like, no triangle can be formed if B is significantly longer than A, given an alpha and an A. What do you want? What do you think now? I have a space here. Ooh, that'd be great. Yeah, if you want to, um, I'm not going to do anything. I got to, we got to do this. So. Okay. You're awesome. Thank you. So, okay. So that's just, and we'll, and we'll see what that looks like in numbers in a minute. Like, you, this will all become clear, but I just want to draw out the four possibilities. Here's another possibility. Alpha's acute, so it looks like that. B is given. The other possibility that A is the perfect length. So that if I so I'm imagining that I that I'm given this this A. We don't know what this angle is. And so if I just take it and swing it down, what's gonna happen? Well, one possibility is as I swing it down, it never touches anything. That would be the case where A is too short, right? I swing it down, it never touches anything, no triangle can be formed. Another case is A is just the right length so that when I swing it down, it touches exactly at one point. Okay? And so, in, in this case, you form one triangle. One triangle is possible if it's just the right length. Another possibility. Another possibility, well, we're going to do that one in a second. Okay. That, that, but that is another possibility. That'll be the case number four that, I'm talk, that we'll talk about. Here's another case. 
Here's alpha. Here's B. Other cases that it's longer than that, but not too long. And in, in that case, it touches here at one point, dips down, and then touches back here at another point. And so in other words, A is the right length so that it touches there. And in this triangle, we call it the acute case because there's, these are all acute angles. The other one, as you bring it back, it touches at one more place right here. And there's A. Weird. And we call that the obtuse case because it forms an obtuse triangle. And so this gives you two possible triangles. See why this is such a pain in the angle side side? <laughs> like, we don't, first off, we don't know just given one angle, an opposite side, and then one other side, which of these cases is it going to be? And then one of the cases has two possibilities, so this is just a real pain. Now, the last case, like Noah said, it's too long. But if it's too long, right, like, in other words, if A is longer than B, well, you can't make enough, right, if, if A is, say, this long, you can't go back and make an acute one, but it will go down over there. If A is very, 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 very long, you could still make a triangle. And so that will be this last case, one possible triangle. What A is infinite. I think it's still a triangle. I think it's still a triangle. Eventually have to cross B. I mean Wait. or the other. If they could meet at infinity. <laughs> oh, if they were both. <laughs> they could they could they meet at infinity. It's possible for that to happen. And I think then you end up Ooh. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Depends what geometry you're in. In the plane, I think that doesn't work, but in a different geometry, I think that could happen. But anyway, okay, so, so, okay, let me just show you what a pain in the angle side side this is. This is because now, just given an angle, and in this case, we're talking about an acute angle, we'll talk about it on the two some second, and the opposite side, so this is, this is key here. One angle and the opposite side, and then plus some other side, that's what this is. Angle side, meaning that those are opposite from each other, and then either of the other sides, there's four possibilities here. And then one of those possible, and in, and in that case, there's only one that doesn't give you a triangle, one that gives you one triangle, one that gives you one triangle, and one that gives you two triangles. So it's a slog whenever you're given one of these. Now there's one more, one more thing we have to discuss before we actually get into how all this works out. The acute case, I mean, I'm sorry, so that's the acute case. I'm just real briefly, if alpha is given and it's obtuse, and A is given, and the other side is B, we're going to call it B. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there's alpha, and now there's really one possibility is that A is too short. Again, if A is too short, it can't connect and you can't form a triangle. The other possibility is that it's long enough to form one triangle. That's it. There's only two possibilities there. Because it can't come back and form another, right? And it can't form a right triangle because alpha is obtuse. So we don't have so many problems. So if you're given an angle side side problem and the angle you're given is obtuse, you're in a much better situation. But here's the question is like, like, and obviously this type of thing is radically different from this. And this type of thing where it's too short is radically different from that. 
But you're not going to sit there and draw the stuff out and see, like you're not going to take a compass and measure this many degrees and then take a ruler and measure this, this much length. So how's that going to show up if you're just looking at the numbers? Well, let's take a look at that. I'll show you what happens. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, let's just, uh, yeah, I, I do want to do that briefly, and then we'll do an actual example where you can see it. So, oh, this is too nice. Good. So let's think about this setup, just numerically here. We're saying that alpha is given and A is given. Okay, and so we're, I'm automatically, and we know that they're opposite from each other. And you're trying to find this angle here, right? Well, because you're given an alpha and you're given an A, and we want to know which case is this, and then you're given a B, the only real thing that we know what to do right now is law of sines. So sine alpha is to A as sine, I guess we're going to call this beta, as sine beta is to B. Well, what we're trying to find here is since that's given, that's given, that's given, that's the unknown, the beta is the unknown, that's the thing we need to solve for. So I'm going to bring my B upstairs. B sine alpha over A is equal to sine beta. And here's how you're going to know. Is if this number right here, whatever it happens to be, if that number is bigger than 1, oh. can sine beta be bigger than 1? Then it, no, it couldn't be a triangle. No, it can't be, right? And look at the, and like this is kind of what we're saying here. If A is really, really small compared to B, A is really, really small, B is really, really big, make your denominator small, you make the number itself big, right? Although, but then you have that sine factor. So it's not just like, you can't just look at these and say, oh yes, that one will be. Unless this one's like 5 million and this one's 0. 0.7. <laughs> You could probably guess, but then again, alpha might be really, really small too. In well, which case, alpha. Yeah, right? Sine alpha would be really small. So you can't oh, just yeah. look at the numbers. It's like you're gonna waste time just trying to look at the numbers and go, yes, I know that's kind of form a triangle. Like it very well could. And so you're gonna need to just compute this, which is what you're gonna do. But then you get there and oh, you find out that's bigger than one. Oh, then that's what that means. Like, that, this sine beta can never be bigger than 1. And so if that ratio turns out to be bigger than 1, you know that you're in this case. Or in the obtuse case, right, there's your alpha, and your A is right there, and then your B is right there. Same type of thing is happening. B is too big, alpha is too small, you end up with something bigger than 1 so that sine beta doesn't exist. Yeah. Okay. So let's put this into practice and see each of these cases. See how each of these cases come up when we do this. And what we're about to do, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to put up on the board an alpha, an A, and I think, I think I do it with a C. And the point is, it doesn't matter that it's alpha, A, and C. It could be beta, B, and A, right? It's that you have an opposite, you have an angle, and it's opposite side, and then either of the other sides. That's what the pain in the angle side side is. That's always the case with these guys. Okay, so. First example. Solve triangle ABC given. So we're solving triangle ABC. This is how it's written in your book. Solve ABC. Given alpha is equal to 62 degrees. A is equal to 90, and C is equal to 120. Now right away, 
You can't tell, right? You can't look at those and go, oh, yes, A is going to be too short. You don't know that, right? Like, I, exactly. Like, looking at that, you can't tell. So what we're going to do is just start off and plug along, assuming that it forms a triangle. If it doesn't form a triangle, it will be apparent very soon. So what I'm going to do is the way I like to do it. I notice, okay, I have an angle and its opposite side, and I'm hoping for another angle. Did you give me another angle? Oh, you gave me another side. Okay, we're going to have to do some work. So, I'm going to start by drawing it out. And it's always going to look like this for me. I mean, sometimes you want to, like, actually take that into consideration. But here we go. Alpha is 62 degrees. A is 90. So now I'm kind of, and this is what I like to do. Like, what's this doing? That's 90. And then C, I'm going to call this side against C. And you're like, but that was B last time. Remember, it doesn't matter what we're calling it. I could have called it smiley face. And then I don't know what the Greek for smiley face would be, but that would be the angle corresponding to it. No. So this is my setup. And I'm going to say, okay, starting off, what do I have? Well, I have an angle and its opposite side. Oh, easy. Okay, so then sine alpha, or another, in this case, sine 62 over 90 is equal to, what's the name of that angle? Uh, gamma. Gamma. Gamma sine gamma is to 120. And so I can say, okay, then I'm going to get, try to get gamma by itself. And I get 120 sine 62. Now you might be inclined to stop there and go, that's a bigger number than that. Well, yeah, but that might be small enough that it's one. We don't, I mean, there's less than one. I don't know. What happens if it equals one? What does that mean? What happened? Let's just suppose, like, we're not going to do this right oh. now, but let's suppose that I plugged all this stuff into my calculator and out popped a 1 equals sine gamma. What does that mean about gamma? Uh, it's... What's gamma have to be? Zero. Wait, oh, sine, no. Oh, so pi over 2. Oh, so Which pi is two. how many degrees? Uh, 90. 90! Uh, 90. Oh. Ah, and that would be the case where you know, oh, that's the 90 degree triangle. We're not going to do a case like that because with these numbers, it would have to be something crazy. But like, it's like, that's what would happen. If that ever happens where you do this part right here and you get one, you know, right off the bat, oh, that must be the case where it's a right triangle. So that gamma would be 90 and you'd be talking about a right triangle. Yeah. But let's see what this is. In this case, we have 120 times sine 62 end parentheses, divide by 9, 0. What do you get? Uh, 1.177. So that's what I got. So what does that mean? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. That means that 90 is not long enough. Right? 90 basically only comes to here. That guy is too long with respect to that guy. So, no triangle. You're done. That was easy. You're done. Go home. Uh, all right. So, okay. Let's change. Okay, everybody got this? Yeah. And look what I'm going to do. So that was the first one. Uh, so now I'm going to change this a little bit. The only thing I'm going to change, so we have 62 degrees for alpha. A is 110. And C is 120. Now we've made A a little bit longer. Still don't know what happens. It might be a right triangle. It might be one of those that's so long that it only touches once. Although that's only going to happen if A is bigger than 120, right? Because if we know that C is 120, then the only way to only touch one time, right, would be that A is longer oh, than yeah. that, right? If A is shorter, then it's got to touch back here somewhere. 
So I'm thinking this is either a right triangle or it's one of those that's going to touch in two places. I don't know, but just what I like to do, I'm going to draw a little dotted line and say that's 110. And that is A. Okay, so let's set it up. Sine 60, same thing, right? Just law of sines. All of this is law of sines. Sine 62 is to 110 as, now, so watch how I'm going to do this. I'm going to, what, what angle is this again? Gamma, gamma. Gamma, so sine gamma is to, now instead of actually writing this and then rewriting everything, I know how I would solve this if I did have a number here. I would bring him upstairs over here. So why don't I just go ahead and do that, right? Yeah. So that's how I actually do this. I'll, I'll, I'll write this down, sine 62 divided by 110 equals sine this, and instead of dividing, I'm just going to multiply the top by what number? 110. One what? 10. Right. How about 120? Oh, 20. 20. Yeah. Victor, you saw what I did there, right? Because what would I write here to finish my law of sines? Divide by 120, since that's opposite from it. You can just move it up. Or I could just move it up. Right. Right. Just save myself a step. So let's see what that gives me. I have 1, 2, 0 times sine 62. End parentheses. Divide by 1, 1, 0. Gives me what? 0.963. Zero point nine six three two. I'm gonna do two. Now that works. Like it yeah, it's less than one. It is less than one. So let's think about this. What just happened here? You said that there's sine of some value. Here's theta. Here's sine. He does something like that. The output of this function, sine theta, gives me a point nine six three two two. There's two possibilities. There's two possibilities. One of them, so I'm going to call this gamma one. The other one is also less than pi, isn't it? It's also less than 180. I'm going to call that gamma two. And so I'm going to use my calculator and go arc sine, because, right, take arc sine of both sides. Arc sine of 0.96322 is going to be arc sine of that, which is just gamma. And in particular, which one is it going to give me, gamma 1 or gamma 2? Gamma 1. Right? Because we know that arc sine does this thing, right? You plug in anything between 0 and 1, and it gives you a value between... 0 and pi over 2, or in this case, 90 degrees, right? So the first one you're going to get will be the acute value, which is what? Inverse sine of all this junk. And look what I did. I, I did inverse sine. If your calculator does this, don't type it in. Go back up, select it, and put it in there. Right? That way I'm not typing in 0.936 blah, 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 blah. I'm just using the previous entry. And what did it give you? Seventy-four point four one two two. Four one one three degrees. Wait, four one. Oh yeah. Wait, I got wait four one two two. Did you chop off the thing? How many decimal places oh, yeah, did, did you? Did. Yeah, you see what I did? I did like this inverse sine. Oh, yeah. And then I just went up back to my original thing, hit enter, okay. and it goes in there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. yeah. Okay, so then how do we get gamma 2? Uh, we, well, it's the same distance. <laughs> so it's 180 minus. Yeah, good, 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 right? This distance right there is oh. 7, 4, blah, 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 blah. This distance right there is 0.74, blah, 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 blah. So to get gamma 2, we go 180 minus gamma 1. So that's 180 minus, and I'm not going to type it in because that would I'm going to lose a bunch of decimal places. I'm just going to press up, select the previous value, and I get 
The gamma 2 is, what did somebody get? 105.58, or, well, mine's not, because the, the last one wasn't exact. Okay. Now, here's the thing, right? As long as you're keeping a bunch of these decimal places, right? You, it, like, I would keep four as you're doing your calculations, and then you don't need to worry about anything for all of these. So that should be good to go. Okay. So now we have two cases. We have what I call the acute case and the obtuse case. Okay? So let's finish this guy. Let's solve this triangle. In the acute case, he's going to look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take this picture like this. Gamma, that's gamma 1, the acute one, the 74.41. Now I'm going to round it off that I'm actually giving my answer. That's okay to round it off because that's my final answer. I'm going to leave it right there. That's cool. Now we can get this one. Right now that you have two angles, get your other angle. So I'm going to go beta equals 180 minus the 74 thing, which I'm not going to bother to type in. I'm going to, I'm going to do the thing. Minus 62. Gives me beta is 43.5887, blah, 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 blah. So when I write it down, I'm going to go 43.59 degrees. Everybody got that? How I got that? Yeah. Now, I'll, the, what's the only thing left that I need to get? Uh, B. B. How am I going to get B? Lots of Lots of signs, right? And so I'm going to start with the thing that I want when I set this up. I'm going to go B divided by, and I'm not actually going to do that, but I know it's going to be D, B divided by. So this is what's going on in my head, but I'm actually not writing this down. B divided by sine stuff is equal to, now I have my choice. I could go here and here or I could go here and here, and I notice that those are exact given values. So those are the ones I want to take, right? 62 and 110 are given. This I had to round off, right? So, I mean, I could use my calculator, but even the calculator is not as exact as the actual given values. So I'm gonna use that one and say, okay, B is to that as A, which is 110, is to sine, it's opposite of 110, 62. Now, instead of writing this down there, that's when I'm going to take him upstairs and say sine beta goes up there. And beta was the one right there, which was the 43.588, blah, 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 blah. And so then B is equal to, I'm going to put all this in here, 110 times sine of, and instead of typing that stuff in, oh, it was the previous thing that I had just got. So I'm going to go up one, select it, put it in there, in parentheses, divide by sine 62. That way I don't have to worry about rounding error or anything like that. And I get 85.897. Yeah. Yeah. 85. So that's the acute case. This is still a pain in the angle side side because we're not done, right? Because now we got the obtuse case that we have to take care of. Oh. Yeah, yeah, isn't that fun? So now we're going to go, okay, I'm going to draw it that way too, where gamma is now obtuse. So it's going to look something like this. There's the obtuse. There's that. So we have alpha, or yeah, alpha, which was 62. Gamma 2, which was 105.59. The opposite from that, no, we don't, yes, we do, we have that. That was 120. Oh, wait. Yeah, C was 120. C equals 120. A equals 110. The thing we don't know is beta, 
And so I'm going to get beta because that's going to be the easiest thing once I have all my angles. As soon as you can get all of your angles, get them. That's 180 minus 62 minus gamma. And I'm not going to type that in. I'm going to go up until I see, oh, there's my gamma, 105.5, blah, 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 blah. And I'll just put that in there and I get 12.411. So beta is equal to 12.411.29. Now, same thing. The only thing left is to find B. And I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to say B is to sine beta as A uh, as 1A is to sine alpha. Sine alpha is 62, but B is the sine beta. I didn't write it down there because I know I'm going to bring him upstairs and go sine beta. Sine beta is 12.41 blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to go 110 times sine of, and I'm not going to type it in because I'm going to mess something up. So I'm going to go up and get my 12.4112938 in parentheses, divide by sine 62 in parentheses and I get 26.776 etc etc and one thing that I didn't talk about here what's a good thing to do is notice something the bigger the angle is the bigger the opposite side should be right so like and that's just like that should just make intuitive sense that like you have an obtuse angle that should be your longest side right there and I'm just gonna check that like my obtuse angle is right here the opposite side is that the biggest one of these numbers yeah 120 is bigger than 110 it's bigger than 26 okay what's my smallest angle well 12.41 is that my smallest side yeah 26 is smaller than 120 and smaller than 110 all right, that looks good. What about this? And I may not have drawn it perfectly, and you're never going to, right? But I can see my smallest angle is 43. The smallest side is 85. The biggest angle is 74. And so the biggest side is opposite from that. So it's a nice way you can check your work when you're done, right? And, like, this certainly does not look like 26 with respect to that. That doesn't matter. Like this is, right, this is like, so that, and that's certainly not 12 degrees right there, right? That's not the point. It's that acute angles should look acute. And you should be able to look back and go, yeah, that one's the biggest and that one's the biggest. Okay, so those are good. Those are good. Those are good. And that's kind of what I'm saying right here is another way of restating the law of sines is that the ratios are the same, right? So like this is to this as this is to this. The bigger this is, the bigger that is, so that they all even out in the same way. And the same, the same thing. Um, I think we're really running out of time. What time is it? Can somebody check for me? It's 12.54. Oh, geez. Yeah, we got to go. Okay, let's, uh, the only other case was I did one more, and I made A, it's the same setup, but I made A equal to 130. And that's just the case where the, the other one comes all the way out, right? Where, where if that's 130, then your triangle looks like uh, this because that one's bigger. And there's only one possibility. And you get that. Actually, we should probably just talk about that real quick. So you can see right away like that when you do it, this guy's 120. If this guy's 130, you know you can't bring him back. That's the, that's the key right there. But everything else is going to look the same because you're going to get, when you go to do your law of sines here, you're going to have 62 with 130, and you're going to say... You're going to say sine 62 is to 130 as sine, since this is C, this is gamma, as sine gamma is to 120. Then you just write your 120 up here. And you go and plug that in, and you get, okay, 
120 times sine 62 divide by 130 and you get 0 0.81503 equals sine gamma. And so you do the inverse and you find that arc sine of that stuff is equal to 54. Now, one thing you might do is you go, oh, but I also have the other one by the same kind of reasoning here. That, like in the last case, it was 0.9 something. This is 0.81503. So you might just keep plugging along and say, oh, I need to find the other one. And so you go to do that and you go, okay, um, 180 minus that will be the other one. So I go 180 minus the 54.59, blah, 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 blah. And I get that my gamma number two is equal to 125.409. But then we have a problem. Because if that's the case, what's your other angle? 180, right? So like, so you see what I'm saying here? So like, on one case you'll get this. So you're, that's the acute case where you have your 62, your 54.59, and then what would that be? Well, that would be 180 minus 62 minus 54.59, da 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 da, and you get 63.41, and some other junk. Then you go to do this case, and you get, okay, here's the acute angle, we have my Here's my obtuse angle, and you get 62. Here you get 125.409. Uh, 62, 180 minus 62 minus 125.409, and you get that your other angle, beta, equals negative 7.409. Oh no, you can't have a negative angle. So what does that mean? Well, as you tried to do this, it was too long, right? Like we said before, you have this setup, and then if this thing is too long, when you swing it back, the next time that it'll touch would be back here somewhere, and that happens to be negative seven point blah, 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 blah. And so that's not, the, that's not what we're talking about. So that's how, if you're just plugging along and you're doing this and you don't bother to notice, hey, that number's bigger than that one. When you go to do this, you'll get a negative angle. And that's what that means, okay? If you get a negative angle up here, that means that you're in this case where there's only one solution. Does everybody get that? Yeah. Okay? Okay. So have fun with all this. This is a real pain in the angle side to side. And I'm sorry, but you gotta learn this stuff. So. All right, guys. What can you make of this calculator? I don't know if I can. <laughs> I don't think it has like arc sign. You can't like select answers. Yeah. I I like, just to, you know what, man? If you get, you will not be disappointed. This would get you through college calculus. I mean, well, calculus. college. Uh, it's um, if you take any uh, chemistry. Yeah. This is abs and it's so great because like like I was saying, right? You do. You've done all this stuff. Now you want to take arc sine of something that you've just figured out. You go arc sine, and then you just go up, and then you have all your old okay. answers there. Yeah. And so you're like, I need the arc sine of what was it? That point eight one one. So you just go select it, hit enter, boom, there it is. You know. And so it's worth it. And the thing is, this is one of the few times where it's like normally. And I think earlier this year I told you just use Wolfram Alpha. And like usually that's what you do. But this is actually quicker. Because you could, like I said, you just go up. With Wolfram Alpha, you have to go, like, go back a page, back a page, back a page. Oh, that's the one I have. Highlight it, cut, you know, copy, and then yeah. paste it in. Or just open, thing. like, 20, 20 tabs. Or open, there you go, I do that often. I have, like, 20 tabs open, and I'm like, oh, it was in this tab. And so it's just a real pain. So I actually suggest getting this, this guy. It's re really useful. And it's just save you time. Yeah. And we're about to do a lot of this, so now would be a good time. All right, you guys are good to go.
I will, uh, I will send you the quiz answers, I, I don't know when, sometime. I have no idea um, when I will get around to that. What's sign H? What? Sign H. Like, Hi, oh, hyperbolic sign. Oh. <laughs> cinch. It's, it's called cinch. I'll show you. We should have talked about it. We were going to talk about this last, last year. Hyperbolic sine, cinch, is e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2. Oh. Cosh, or hyperbolic cosine, is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. How does that have to do with sine? Shouldn't it be with like log or something? <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with sine and cosine? You have to wait to calculus. Everything is in capitals. Yeah, it really is. There's so much mystery bound up in it. And uh, I, I'm, ho I'm hoping to intrigue you, to entice you to do calculus. Because it's, it's actually, it's, it's all... Yeah, Although, it, we could... Oh, why not? <laughs> Let's just do it real quick. You guys are already late. So, here's the thing. Um... You know, you remember the conic sections? What were the conic sections, real quick? Uh, hyperbola. Yeah, yeah hyperbola uh, was one. And the parabola. Parabola. Ellipse and circle. Ellipse and a circle. And I said that sine and cosine are the circle functions. Yeah. Right? That was like my... I said, we could just call these the circle functions. This all has to... And I said day one, this is called trigonometry. If I were naming these, these classes, I would have called it circles. Because it's all about circles. And we saw, yeah, indeed, sine and cosine given a circle, sine it's just the is just given the unit circle, one, one, negative one, and negative one, then cosine is just the x coordinate, sine is just the y coordinate, right? And so, given the theta, measured in radians. That's one conic section. Another conic section is a hyperbola. That looks something like this. And I remember these. Given whatever, I don't remember exactly, something like this, where this type of thing. I'm not sure if it's measured like that. Now its coordinates are given by cosh. Is cosh is a plus one, yeah. So cosh t cinch. So geometrically, there's a there's an analog to these guys. So and how does t work? I don't exactly remember. It might be. I don't, it's not. It's it's not the angle. It's something like that, but there's an analog to all of this. So if you're using a circle and you're tracking your progress along a, along a circle, you use sine and cosine. If you're tracking your progress along a hyperbola, and this is a hyperbola that goes through one, and I think it is, so this was the hyperbola, or the, the, the circle x squared plus y squared equals one. This is the one x squared minus y squared okay. equals one. And in that case, cosh and cinch. And it turns out that cosh of t is equal to e to the t plus e to the negative t, the average of e to the t and the negative t. Cosh looks something like this. This through here at 1, shoots way up, way up. Cinch. So like, if you might, oh, that's a parabola, that's because I can't draw. No, but yeah. <laughs> mine is e to the negative t over two. The average of those two functions, but now the difference between them, like the average, is not. Cinch looks like that. Shoots down like that. Looks like the end. Kind of, it is kind of similar. Kind no, of similar. Like and there's there's a tanch. So <laughs> cinch. <laughs> what is it? Cinch over cosh. Oh, is so tan. So Tanch. Do all of those things, like all those identities, identities same, still apply? Which is the same thing. Well, yeah, not really. They they have different. When you square that, instead of so so we get cosine squared. Oh. 
cosine squared plus sine squared yeah. equals one. Now it's cosh minus cinch equals one. Wunch. <laughs> and so cinch is the e to the t minus e to the minus t over e to the t plus e to the minus t. And you can see it, we can verify this. If you square that out minus that squared, it does come out to be one. Let's just do it. Oh, I love this stuff. I just gotta do it. I can't, I can't let it go. We gotta do it. Um, let's just do it real quick. So let's verify. So there's that one. Let's verify cosh squared minus cinch squared equals one. Cosh squared is e to the t plus e to the negative t squared over two minus e to the t minus e to the negative t squared over two. That's the same thing as first outer inner last e to the two t plus e to the t times e to the t is one. one e to the t times e to the negative t is one plus e to the negative two t, right? Because e to the t times e to the negative t is the same thing as e to the t minus t. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Or it's the same thing as e to the t divided by e to the t, which is just one. Yeah. And e to the t times e to the t is just e to the two t, right? So I'm, I'm jumping a bunch of steps right there. That's all over four, minus e to the two t minus one, minus 1 plus e to the minus 2t all over 4. We get plus this minus that is gone. Plus this minus that is gone. And so all we're left with is plus 1 plus 1 minus minus 1 is plus 1. Minus minus 1 is plus 1. Uh, all over 4 yeah, is one. 4 over 4 is 1. And so <laughs> Yeah, they're the hyperbolic functions. Ha! That's kind of cool. And yeah, you see that in calculus. So, all right. Also, it turns out, this is one more thing. <laughs> turns out, uh, I think it's called a can. It's not a Canterbury. A canter, a canter lever. If you take, if you take two poles, and you hang a wire between the two, or a rope, or something like that. The shape that it makes, it's cosh. But it's not just cosh, it's like cosh of a t for some constant a. And that has the, the depending on how far, how much stuff you have and how far apart these are, will stretch it or make it whatever. But it's that, it's that shape. Kind of cool. Yeah. All right, get out of here, you're way late now.